like this remote railroad disaster in North Dakota, which rocked an entire community. The force of the explosions, it was unbelievable. The huge fireballs threatened a small town. You could be a quarter mile away and feel that heat coming off of it. And revealed a potentially fatal flaw lurking in the nation's rail cars. North Dakota, a vast flat state that boasts some of the richest soil in the world. Fine. Photographer and farmer Dawn Ford has been working the land around the town of Castleton for nearly 40 years. Agriculture has always been the most important part of North Dakota. It, it keeps the businesses rolling. Agriculture has been king. Around 90% of North Dakota is farmland. That's equivalent to 30 million football fields, or four times the size of Switzerland is one of the top grain producers in the country. In 2000, grain was rivaled by newly discovered oil in the so-called Barken boom. Named after Henry Barken, on whose farm the first exploratory wells were drilled, the oil is extracted by a process known as hydraulic fracturing or fracking. The Bakken boom was huge. We had people coming in from all over the country. We had a housing shortage out west. The high quality crude became known as North Dakota sweet. It is that pure that we were told that you could probably put it in your diesel pickups and be able to operate them on pure Bakken oil. Oil production was soon second only to Texas. Thanks to years of grain transportation, the infrastructure was already in place to get the valuable cargo where it needed to go. The railroad goes straight through the middle of town. All you saw was the oil tankers going past. The United States was built around train tracks when you think about it. Key to a railway's success is the ability to carry massive loads long distances. The most vital component is the wheel set. Each set has two steel wheels connected by a solid steel axle. At each end, roller bearings hold the axle in place on the truck, allowing the wheels to rotate freely. But these trains carry massive loads, and the stresses on the axles and bearings are enormous. The forces might be huge, but the setup is simple. John Hale is a local rail expert. The axle just carries the weight of the train. That's really all that holds that together, it's just gravity. And so all it's meant to do is lessen the friction as the train rolls down the track. By 2013, North Dakota was rolling out millions of barrels of oil a week. In 2009, there was something like 9,500 rail shipments of crude oil in the United States. And in 2013, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 400,000. With both grain and oil now rumbling across the plains, up to 50 trains were passing through Castleton daily, some loaded with more than 13 million liters of crude. On December 30th, 2013, at 2.10 2 p.m., a grain train hauling 112 cars was heading west, more than a kilometer and a half out of town, with the onboard camera recording. A trackside engineer saw damage that suggested something was being dragged along the rails, and he immediately radioed the crew. Without warning, the emergency brake on the grain train kicked in. Meanwhile, a 104-car train, loaded with bark and crude, was heading in the opposite direction. The grain train crew sent an emergency warning, but the oil train's radio was on a different channel, and they heard nothing. What neither crew knew was that 13 cars in the middle of the grain train had derailed, blocking the track ahead. By the time the oil train driver saw the wreck and hit the brake, it was too late.
both locomotives, a buffer car and 20 tankers loaded with crude oil derailed. Volunteer firefighter Paul Fort was expecting the worst. When you first hear a call like that, your heart drops just a little bit because it's like, oh, how bad is this? And then you start to just pick yourself up and say, I got a job to do and we need to go do it. Paul's sister-in-law, local photographer Dawn, was heading into town at the time. A few miles out, we saw the first explosion. And we drove to approximately 3 quarters of a mile from the actual derailment. And I started taking photos. What Dawn captured was the stuff of disaster movies. Huge columns of smoke and flames and heat coming back at us. Big black smoke billowing out of it. The derailed tankers had ruptured, and more than a million and a half litres of crude were gushing onto the tracks. Paul and the team knew they had a major disaster on their hands. When you start seeing that much fire, it's, it's how bad and how big is this going to get, and what are we going to do to control this? More than 80 cars full of highly explosive crude were still attached to the train, just feet away from the inferno. We had people looking at disconnecting the fuel, taking the train away. One of our friends was with the train engineer, basically belly crawling up to the cars as far as they could so they can unhook, and then the other locomotive pulled them back out of the way to, to stop all of the chain explosions. These heroic actions helped slow the spread, yet the wreckage still burned throughout the night. The only thing preventing human tragedy was the fact the accident occurred more than a kilometre outside town. We were all so fortunate that the derailment happened where it did in an empty field versus the city of Castleton. In the immediate aftermath, an investigation was launched to discover exactly what had gone wrong. There's no doubt what caused the inferno. The force of the derailment ruptured the tankers, and once the oil caught fire, there was no stopping it. But that didn't solve why the grain train derailed in the first place. At first, investigators didn't know whether track or train was at fault. Then, in the devastation where the derailment began, they discovered a broken axle. When you see the scale of the explosions, a broken axle doesn't sound like a big deal. But this one had an unusual hole in the middle. It was smaller than a golf ball, but it was the best clue that the investigators had. Investigators traced the void back to 2002, 10 years earlier, and a defect from the original casting process. When made, it had been tested for flaws, but back then there was no requirement to look deep inside. And yet, further analysis revealed this small hole had triggered the entire catastrophe. With a solid axle, stress forces are distributed equally. But this central void, although small, had a jagged shape, which created uneven stresses, causing metal fatigue. Until finally, a decade later, the axle failed. This axle was a ticking bomb. It had been trundling across the rail networks for years, getting weaker with every stress and strain from heavy loads. It's just so lucky that when it finally failed, it was a mile outside Castleton. In the wake of the disaster, there were multiple recommendations for safety improvements. At the time of the accident, new axles were routinely being examined with ultrasound. But the rules were changed so that secondhand axles would have to be inspected too, which would have revealed a flaw like this. And to prevent rupturing in the event of another derailment, tanker cars are being made more robust with thermal protection and pressure relief valves. Rail car design changed. They wanted rail cars to be built thicker and they wanted more safety parameters put on their valving, just making them safer to haul product. With safer rail cars and more thorough inspections, disasters like this should be a thing of the past. There's a multiple things that were learned at this incident. Nobody got hurt. As firefighters, we can go out there and look at this and say, 
you know what, I think we can handle it. And that's why there's so much more training going on for incidents like this. And I think that's great. I, it's definitely a once in a lifetime experience and one that I hope I never witness again.